Have you ever wanted to share your faith, but felt intimidated, uh, just felt uncomfortable, felt like you didn't know how, didn't quite know how to approach it? Welcome to the 95% of the Christian body of Christ. Uh, I asked a friend of mine who is a senior pastor of five different churches, who is now retired, I said, tell me something, Rick, what percentage of the churches that you've ever dealt with, what percentage of the laymen would feel comfortable sharing their faith? He said, well, I've never done research on it. I said, well, just, I'm not talking about data. I'm talking about just, just a ballpark. What, what would you guess? What would you guess he told me? He told me, well, probably 5% feel comfortable, 95% feel uncomfortable. Well, I have to admit something to you. I'm part of the 90, 95%. I don't feel comfortable sharing my faith with people really at all. Uh, and what I'd like to share with you in the next 20 minutes or so is a concept that I think would feel uh, uh, comfortable to the 95%. The 95% that don't feel comfortable sharing their faith, it's a way to give them 100% confidence in sharing their faith. That's what I'd like to share with you. Uh, I was thinking about why do people feel uncomfortable sharing their faith? I think it's fear of rejection, fear of getting into an argument they can't win, uh, fear of uh, being seen as a, re a religious fanatic, uh, being seen as a know-it-all, et cetera. Now, there's, there are many reasons that people don't share their faith, feel uncomfortable with it. Uh, but how do you overcome that? If you're part of the 95%, how do you overcome that? Uh, Cheryl and I live on the seventh floor of a condominium in, in Scottsdale, Arizona. And uh, I wanted to uh, share my faith more. Uh, I wanted to share it with more confidence. I didn't quite know how to do it. But at the bottom of our elevator, we have a little uh, triangle. It's a little triangle that, it's just a little triangle. And I thought, what if I put a Christian book on, the, on that thing? When you put it on that triangle, it's free. You can take, anyone can take it that wants to. If it's a salt and pepper shaker, if it's a book, if it's a tape, if it's it, whatever it is, you can take it. It's free. So I started leaving uh, just sort of books there that, that weren't, obviously Christian, frankly. And when I'd leave it, when I'd come back from the store, it'd be gone. I thought, hmm, that's interesting. So I thought, what if I left an obviously Christian book, something like Josh McDowell's uh, Evidence That Demands a Verdict? So I began, uh, I've known Josh since 1980, and I, I began leaving his books there. And shockingly, when I got back from the store, it was gone. I thought, oh, that's interesting. So I just left them and, and it, it just began to be a routine that no one knew I was leaving the book. No one saw me leave the book. And so I left it with 100% confidence. I just left the book there. And when I got back, it was gone. And I knew that someone had heard the faith because of it. We had a couple that we're friends with here in, in, the, in uh, Arizona, uh, over for dinner, Christy and Doug Napier. We had them over for dinner. I was sharing the fact that I'd found a way to share my faith. And Christy, who has a throat problem and has had several surgeries, like 60 some surgeries, uh, basically whispered to me, I do that too. And I said, what do you mean? She said, since I can't talk, uh, when I go to a beauty supply or beauty salon, uh, I take a book and I leave it on purpose. They think I left it on mistake, by mistake. It, it may seem to you like I'm dull, but it just dawned on me that not only could I share my faith this way, but because Christy does, who couldn't? You could, everyone could share their faith uh, this way. And it began to really hit me hard that the 95% the that didn't share their faith confidently could share it. 
It didn't matter what they looked like, how socially confident they were, if they had a medical issue, if they had a, if they were uncomfortable socially. It, there were no limits to who could share their faith with 100% confidence by having a book that they could simply leave somewhere. They could leave it in a restaurant. They could leave it in an airport. They could leave it uh, uh, in, a, in a park. They could leave it anywhere. And it would be a book that contained the plan of salvation. And they could leave it and the people would think they left it by mistake, but they left it on purpose. You didn't have to have a seminary degree. You didn't have to have anything. You could just leave it. And it began to, to mm, grow in terms of my comfort to explain to people, you could leave it and no one would know. But then people began saying to me, oh, this is so helpful. It, it gives me confidence to, to share my faith. But then they began to show me a different dimension. And that was, you could give it to someone in other words, there's someone that you never felt comfortable sharing your faith with. Uh, it could be a teacher that was an agnostic. It could be a cousin that you just never could win an argument with. It, it could be anyone that you could give them a book, not just leave it on a free zone, but you could actually give them a book. Say, hey, here's a book that I, I found uh, helpful. Thought you might like to have a copy of it and just give them a copy. And in it, there is the plan of salvation. You may not feel like uh, it's as, mm, as quote, professional or something as talking them through uh, the plan of salvation, but it does share the plan of salvation with them. So you could either leave it or you could give it. And when you leave it or give it, you simply pray ahead of time and you say, Lord, Whoever needs this book, please help them be help this be the right time for them. That it's the right time in their spiritual journey that they would uh, know it, that they would see it, they'd understand it. It began to be a real I guess I would say it began to just be a real, uh, I don't know that it's comfort zone. I don't know that it's, it just began to be something that I felt good about doing, felt comfortable, confident. It was predictable that when I left it, I would feel comfortable doing it. And it had a plan of salvation in it. But why is sharing our faith so important? I was watching a television series on here in the United States, we have a, a channel called the PBS, Public Broadcasting System. And as I was watching it, they had a special on the, uh, the spacecraft uh, that was um, uh, up there, the Hubble spacecraft that was up there for, I think, 25 years or something like that. And they were explaining the mathematics of it, et cetera. And what they described was, it had that the, their best guesstimate, their mathematicians guessed that the earth is 12.7 billion years old. Now, I hadn't grown up theologically thinking it was that old, but I thought, what if it is that old? What if the earth is 12.7 billion years old? It is not 100 years old, which seems like a long time to me. 100 years old seems like a long time, but 500 years seems like really long. 2,000 years since Jesus was here seems like forever. And when a person says, please let him put a drop of water on my tongue because I'm here in hell, to realize that that person is still in hell 2,000 years later. But it isn't 2,000 years later. It isn't, it isn't even 100,000 years later they're still in hell. It isn't even a million years. It isn't even a billion years that hell is. It isn't, it isn't even 12.7 billion years there in hell. It's eternity. 
way beyond the start of heaven or the start of hell into eternity. It's just unbelievable how long that is. We can't even imagine it. You can't imagine it. I can't imagine it. But I still felt guilty for not sharing my faith. And by leaving books or giving books, it helped me get over the guilt of not sharing my faith, of being part of that 95% that just never felt comfortable doing it. It helped me grow in that area very specifically and unlocking me. Um, one of the things I began to see was that this could be part of my life dream, part of my life mission, that I could share one book a month, one book a week, one book a year. But by having it be something that over my lifetime, for the rest of my life, I could be sharing my faith this way was a real um, comfort to me, a real uh, dream I could have of how I could share my faith very comfortably. Now, one of the things I began to see as I began to look for books was that most Christian books are frankly written by Christian leaders for a Christian audience. They weren't written, uh, frankly, as a Christian Christian writer for a non-Christian audience. And uh, as I began to look at this, I began to look at all the books I'd written. I've written, uh, I've written, I think, 23 books. This is just a few of the books I've written. But those books were not written with a plan of salvation in them. And I thought, what are the books that have a plan of salvation in it? And I realized that I had a manuscript I'd had for a number of years. It was called Decade by Decade, this book, Decade by Decade, where I explain what the, the patterns I'd seen in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s in interviewing the thousands of people I've interviewed over my 75 years. Uh, and so I, I basically had the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. And then when I got to the 90s, I began to see that in the 90s you could leave a plan of salvation in it. So I asked Tom Stebbins, who for years was the president of Evangelism Explosion. I said, Tom, would you mind writing out the plan of salvation for me? He said, I'd be happy to. And when he came back, he said, Bob, I've shared my faith with literally thousands of people. But he said, this writing it out took me 18 hours because I didn't want to get it wrong. To have it in writing, I wanted to make sure it was right. So I asked uh, some people who were theologically sophisticated, would you read this and see if, if you're comfortable that this is the plan of salvation, which they did and they agreed. Uh, it is the plan of salvation. It, they were comfortable saying, this is the way to say it. And so what the book is, is a book that's very comfortable to non-Christians in the early uh, chapters. And it's a book that a lot of people, it's, it's selling very well at $20 a book. And yet when you get to the 90s, it shares the plan of salvation. And a lot of people who are in their 70s, 80s, 90s uh, can share it with their parents who are in their 90s. In a nursing home, they can have them read it and, and tell them the plan of salvation. When we've got something like the pandemic going on, they can give the book and say, and just let them read it, say, this is something I thought you might like to read. And when it gets to the, to the period of the point where there may be death in the future, there's the plan of salvation in it. So it's a book written by a Christian, written for non-Christians in the front end, but have the plan of salvation in the back end of the book, which turned out to be uh, what I thought was a good way to do it. I've been in Uber, uh, Ubers on the way to the airport. One guy said to me, uh, I'm going to next week to see my father in New Jersey. And he's in the process, he's pretty close to death. And I said, he had a, a, a cross on his uh, uh, 
rear view mirror. And so I said to him, am I correct in assuming you're a Christian? Uh, by, by your cross theory, am I correct in assuming you're a Christian? He said, yes, I'm a Catholic. And so I don't know how you feel about Catholics, but I said to him, um, you know, I've written a book that's about the plan of salvation. Uh, could I give you a copy? And then uh, you can read it to make sure that you're comfortable with what I've said. And if you're comfortable with it, offer to read it to your father, who may or may not uh, have the plan of salvation, understand how to go to heaven when he dies, not go to hell, but go to heaven for all eternity. He said, oh, thank you. I, I'd really like that. So I've had many, many, many opportunities to share the book, uh, to leave the book, to give the book. And uh, what Cheryl and I decided was we can put our name in the book or we don't have to. We can underline the book or we don't have to. But what we've decided was we are selling the book many books for $20 a piece in our catalog, just bobbeal.com. But we decided that we'd like to make the book available to Christians to share their faith at our cost, which is $2 a book. Uh, right now it's a little over $2 a book, but it eventually it'd be $2 a book. So if you are interested in, in having the decade by decade book, simply write bookevangelism.com and if you order 10 of them at a time, we'll make them available to you for $2 a book. Brand new, $2 a book, the books that are selling for, for $20. And if you say, well, Bob, I'm in uh, Romania or I'm in some other country, and I'd like to consider uh, uh, printing this book in our language. Because, I, by the way, you can put your pastor's book in here, your book in here, any book with a plan of salvation in it, I don't care that it be my book. You can put any book in there that you begin leaving for people to pick up, uh, thinking that you left it by mistake, but you left it on purpose. But if you would like to print it in your language, um, simply uh, contact me through book I'm sorry, bookevangelism.com and uh, just let me know and I'll be happy to talk to you about printing it in your language. So uh, the thing that I have, and Cheryl and I have reflected on for a long time is that eternity is forever. We don't talk much about hell these days, but hell is a real place. Uh, John Lennox, a couple of years ago in his plenary session says, there are three things that the Christian faith has to remember. Number one is that Jesus is God. Number two, he was born on the earth. Uh, he, uh, uh, born of a virgin, uh, died on the cross, and rose again to heaven. And number three, heaven and hell are real places. We don't hear much about heaven. We certainly don't hear much about hell these days. But they are real places. And we, it's important for us to share our faith because eternity is in fact forever. And to the extent that you can leave a book somewhere that gives a person opportunity to share their, to, to, real, real, uh, to accept Christ and live forever in eternity is really important. It's really, really important. And let's say, for example, you give a book and the person doesn't accept Christ. They read it, but don't accept Christ. They just leave it in their library. Maybe 30 years from now, it's the right time for them to accept Christ. Eternity is forever. And you simply pray and say, Lord, whoever is supposed to read this book, whenever they're supposed to read it, now or 30 years from now, I pray that they would read it and accept your son as, as Savior.